and I would appreciate your insight on that. Yeah, thank you. That, it's a good question. I, you, you may not be aware of the history of, of the issuance, of, but uh, we issued the B shares. There, there were no, I mean, they're just a common share, so we renamed the old shares A shares, but we issued the B shares, whatever it was, what, seven or eight years ago, Charlie, something like that. And we did that in response to uh, some people, particularly a fellow in Philadelphia, who we felt was going to induce people who really didn't understand Berkshire at all into a terribly expensive way of owning tiny pieces of Berkshire, probably sold on the basis of an historical record that we did not think was representative of what could be incurred in the future. In other words, we were, we were disturbed by somebody who saw a chance to make a lot of money off of people who were really uninformed uh, using our stock as the vehicle, and we were going to reap the unhappiness of those people. Subsequently, they're going to run into tax problems and various administrative cost problems and so on. So to ward that off, and only to ward that off, I mean, we issued uh, the B stock, which effectively put that fellow out of business because it was a better vehicle for doing what he was going to try and get people to do at great profit for himself. And when we issued it, it had not existed before, and we made, we put two differences in it from the A stock. A, we wanted to create a lower value per share, so we did it on a 130th basis. At the time, it was around $1,100 or thereabouts because the A was selling for in the low 30000 But we, we put on the prospectus, which is a very unusual prospectus in other respects, we put on that we were going to differentiate the stock in only two ways. But we were going to differentiate it in those two ways. And one was the voting power because we didn't want to issue the stock and we didn't want to change the voting situation much. And the second way was in terms of the designated charitable contributions, which we the A was going to continue to uh, enjoy and the B would not participate in. And the reason the B wasn't going to participate in it is because the amounts would have gotten to a point where it, that would have been an administrative nightmare. I mean, this year we designated $18 on the A shares. We've got a lot of one share B holders, which would be 60 cents, and it just, it just doesn't make any sense. And we saw that, so we just said if you buy the B shares, you're buying into an instrument which economically is equal to one thirtieth of an A. In voting, it is not equal to one thirtieth of an A because we we don't want to change the voting that much, and it does not. It has a slight economic difference in terms of the fact it doesn't get to participate in the charitable contributions program, which is a very small item relative to the whole capitalization. But it's still it's something. But we do not. You'll notice R A and B compared to other companies that have different voting arrangements. I was just looking at one the other day where the premium for the voting stock is 10 or 12 percent or something like that relative to economic interest. That's because people assume that if, you know, if the company's ever sold or anything like that, the guy that owns the A will get treated better than the B. And Charlie and I have been in a situation where we got somewhat taken because of a, situa because of, uh, uh, a relationship like that. Uh, we will treat the B uh, exactly as the A, except for those two things, which at the time of issuance we set out as being differences. We set, and, and those two items everybody saw coming into the picture, and, and they're going to stay, they will stay as part of the, uh, part of the picture. Uh, actually, you know, in terms of when the meeting will be held two years from now, you know, we aren't even going to vote by votes in a sense. I mean, I'm going to get a sense of what people want to do, but I regard in that respect, I think that it ought to be the most convenient for the most people, not not for the m most number of shares. A will not vote any different than B or anything because, you know, it, you're all individual people and I want whatever works best for, for the most. But in terms of those two other items, they were set out that way and, and they'll stay that way if, if uh, uh, you know, if we'd set out a different, we would not change the relationship once the, of of, of uh, the two stocks, once they were issued, we would not we would not benefit one relative to the other. But those are the terms of the two. Charlie. Yeah, we uh, we had to issue the B stock to frustrate the ambitions of this jerk promoter, and yet we didn't want to split the A stock down to all of it down to tiny little fractions which would have frustrated him, but forced us to have a 
stock split we didn't want. So we created a vehicle which was had these two slight disadvantages and that kept most of our capitalization in its traditional A stock and also frustrated the promoter. It's an historical quirk. It's an accident of life. And the B is sold at a remarkably consistent relationship to the A. If the discount got as low as, or as high, I should say, as I think it was over 4% for a, a small period of time, but it's generally speaking, the, the B is sold at parity to slightly, very slightly below parity, and indeed A shares get converted to B, and that would not happen unless the B were at parity. Uh, so it's, I think it's worked out pretty well. I mean, we didn't, we backed into it, but, but I, I don't think anybody's been disadvantaged, disadvantaged by it. 